brand new to Foundry VTT or shopping around for a new virtual tabletop, then this video is perfect for you, where we are going to give a bird's eye view of everything that makes Foundry just so great. Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the Bailiwiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. We also make modular maps and systems that you can use without any setup for Foundry VTT. Some of which will be the backdrop for today's video where we're going over all of the things that make Foundry amazing. Obviously, we're huge fans of the VTT, and we want to talk about some of the different things that make Foundry, well, Foundry. These are different features that you can come to expect from a lot of different VTTs and some that really set it apart. We're going to be going through some different sections so you can get a good idea of just what Foundry is like. If you're new to the platform, then this is a great way to get acquainted with the general capabilities of Foundry. If you're looking at other VTTs, trying to figure out what one is best for you, then this is a good place to see what Foundry is all about. If that sounds good to you, then let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, before we dive into the software itself, there's a few key things that we think we should talk about first. The first thing is that Foundry VTT is a one-time purchase. So you purchase a license key from foundryvtt.com and then you can download the software and you have all of the updates in perpetuity. Now, that one-time purchase does not include server hosting. While you can host from your local device for free, you do have to have some technical know-how for it. There are a lot of different server hosting partners with Foundry that you can use instead if you're not up for that kind of challenge. Another huge aspect of Foundry that kind of affects everything about it is that it is an incredibly community development focused project. Third party modules and systems are not only allowed, but they're also encouraged on Foundry. There are thousands of modules that give you additional content or new technical capabilities for the platform. This also means that just about every TTRPG system you can think of is available to play on Foundry in some capacity or another. So that makes it very broad and very flexible with what it can do. Now that we've done a little bit of the overview here, let's dive into Foundry. When you first fire it up, you'll be on your game world section. So in other VTTs, you might see this referred to as games. And here you can create a world, assign it whatever your favorite system is, add a description and a background image, and even put when your next session time is. Speaking of those game systems, you can head over to the game systems tab where you can then install your favorite TTRPG system for creating your world. After systems, there is the add-on module section that we mentioned earlier. There are, again, thousands of different ways to add additional content or technical capabilities to Foundry, so you can really tailor and customize your experience. Also in the setup area, we have a bunch of news so you can learn about the latest happenings in the Foundry world. And then we have a warning section for any issues you might be experiencing or things to keep an eye on, a way to configure your server at large, including admin passwords and all of those good things, a way to update the software directly from within it, and then finally a pretty robust backup management system that allows you to backup just about every aspect of your Foundry installation. And then to hop into a game, you simply return to that game world section and you launch your world. In your world, we'll take a quick tour of the UI here. So on the right is what we call our directories. We start off with our chat directory where you can see messages sent from you or your players, as well as any important things with combat. Speaking of, next is the combat tracker. Then we have our directory for scenes, which is all of the things that show you what's happening on your map. And you can right click and view those scenes to go to them. And you have directories for storing your actors, items, journal entries, and more all through here. We'll linger briefly here on the compendiums tab, and this is basically your storage for all kinds of things that you want to be able to bring into your world without necessarily having it imported all the time. Helps keep you organized, and this is where you can store things you don't need immediately at hand. Then finally, we have our settings with a lot of different settings aspects. Within those, we want to talk about tour management. Foundry has a nice feature where there are these tours or tutorials that you can use this reset defaults to reset the progress for all of. 
when you hit play, it'll have a series of dialogues that are going to highlight different aspects and walk you through what they do. So it's a fairly useful way to get acquainted when you're first diving into Foundry. And this also applies for a lot of modules as well. When it comes to moving tokens in Foundry, it's quite straightforward. You can use WASD for movement, as well as the numpad. And if you press two directions at the same time, you can travel in diagonals, or using the diagonals on the numpad, you can also travel diagonally. This also supports having a click and drag style movement. And you'll notice that if we run into an object here, in this case, some walls, then it will stop us from doing that. We can also hold down control and set waypoints as we are moving our characters around. And we'll similarly get stopped if we're going to run into anything. It also counts based on your system, how much movement you're supposed to have in a given turn or a given action that you're allowed. And it will color code that path based upon how much of that movement you've used. Green if you still have some, yellow if you're going too far. There's also a lot of great ways to spruce up your scenes. In this case, we're gonna talk about the lighting. The lighting engine in Foundry is really quite something. It's super simple to just click and drag to create your light with its radius, and then you can change the colors, apply animations, and all kinds of special effects. It's really quite in depth, as you can get very granular with a lot of these things and allows a lot of customization, but it's also quite easy to just throw down a light, pick a color for it, and keep going but there's a lot to explore if you're interested in it. Additionally, in our lighting tools, Foundry has some options for this darkness threshold, and that is based upon the scene darkness that we can toggle really easily with a couple of buttons to change the lighting of the overall scene. You'll notice that these lights are set up with a darkness threshold, as well as these sounds, so that they are going to be different between night and day. These are quite easy to set up, but add a ton of style and flair to your scenes and are really easy to use and make a really cool immersive experience in Foundry. As you heard earlier, there is also quite a robust sound system in Foundry. Similar to lights, you simply click for your center point and drag to set the radius of your sounds. And you can choose whatever sounds you have in your files or upload them, etc and you have all kinds of great features you can tinker around with. Whenever you have a token selected and you're within one of these ambient sound beacons, you'll be able to hear it. And there's also a tool to preview the sounds just by hovering your mouse around. And you'll notice that this has a volume easing feature, so you can have stuff louder closer to the source and quieter further away. We can also turn that off and then allow us to have the same volume throughout the entirety of the area of effect. There's also special features for being able to add extra effects to the sound itself, such as high and low pass filters or reverb to change the sound of an individual beacon. In addition to sound beacons, there's also playlists that are more global here. There are a lot of different controls here where you can change how a playlist functions, whether that's a regular sequential playback to shuffle tracks, simultaneous or just soundboard, where you have to play them individually. And each of those tracks have their own volume adjustments and you can set the audio channels for things so that you and your fellow players can adjust what's being louder or quieter for them if say they want to hear the environmental noises more or the music more, etc. We can get up to all kinds of more advanced things. As we approach this tavern here, we'll start to hear the tavern sounds, but they're a little muffled. And as we approach more, it gets louder and louder until we reach a door where that we open into the tavern. And we'll notice now it's not only louder, but also much more clear. So we're also able to use some advanced techniques with walls in order to dampen sound and give that cool effect of actually hearing something from outside of the room. Speaking of walls, all of these lighting effects and vision and sound have all been heavily influenced by walls. Foundry has a really great simple system where it's just click and drag to have your start point and your end point, and you can connect them together by holding a hotkey to have things link up. And there are a lot of different presets for the wall configurations with these really handy tool tips telling you all about them. 
And of course, you can also open up the walls and individually set these different aspects about them. So there's a lot of customization you can do there for a lot of different setups. And we can get really advanced with our doors as Foundry VTT now supports animated doors where you can define a variety of animations, textures, and sounds that add a really spectacular and immersive experience to interacting with the doors throughout your maps. Getting into some more advanced techniques, there are also weather effects that are available with Foundry. Simply configuring our scene and going to our ambiance section, we can set up things like autumn leaves or rain or snow for these great particle effects that overlay over top of our maps and add some extra style and flavoring to them. And our last piece of scene work is going to be regions. These are special areas that you can define on the scene that will have extra properties based upon how you and your players interact with them. You can link these up to teleporting tokens around, increasing the movement cost when going through them, or a host of other functions and features. With our scene set up, let's talk about running a combat encounter in Foundry. Regardless of your system, there will be a add to combat option on the token HUDs here that allows you to have a combat tracker in your sidebar, or you can right click it to pop it out where you can click on the dice next to the combatants to roll their initiative individually, or you can roll them all at once. And this lets you track what the initiative order is and advance turns, etc. So it's quite easy to track the order of things going on. You'll also notice in combat, whenever someone makes an attack or uses an ability, it will put something into your chat bar as well. And that will pop out even if you're not actually on chat, you'll be able to see the latest card for a few moments. So it's quite easy to keep track of. Checking out our directories, there are journals, which are ways you can have notes and you can show those to your players and they're quite powerful. You can add links to different things, images. You can even add whole PDFs as pages. When it comes to editing them, it's a simple WYSIWYG style editor, so a fairly approachable way to get into it. You can also use some advanced code view if you feel like dabbling more in some advanced methods. And it's quite easy to keep these organized with categories for the different types of pages within an individual journal entry. You can think of almost more like a notebook rather than a page of notes. Next up, we have our macros directory. And this is a really powerful tool. Foundry is built in JavaScript, and so all of the script versions of macros are going to be using JavaScript as well. With this, you can do all kinds of powerful things, such as change aspects of your scene instantly, or toggle between two values like scene darkness here that are not necessarily your zero and one. And you can also use a more traditional MMO style route where you can drag key abilities or attacks from a character sheet onto a macro bar and use things directly from the bar. You can do this by clicking on the macro in the bar or hitting the corresponding number key on your keyboard to execute it. So lots of ways to keep them nice and handy. Foundry also has two other systems. We have roll tables for being able to roll your loot or random encounters that are quite easy to set up. And also a card system where you can create decks, piles, and hands to be able to deal to and from and pass around and reset so that you can use those for any other features in your game, whether that's actually playing a game of poker or getting that tarot reading that is definitely not going to come back to haunt you. Now that we've gone over kind of the universal features of Foundry, I also want to mention these systems. As we talked about earlier, there is a ton of system support. We've obviously been using D&D 5e here, but we also have system support for things like DC 20 and Pathfinder 2e. There are over 300 of these systems that are all installable at the click of a button and for the most part community driven. So whatever your favorite TTRPG system is, there's a good chance that there is a Foundry instance of it available for you to play. And of course, no discussion of Foundry VTT would be complete without at least addressing the capabilities of third-party modules. These can give you new content for your games or completely change how Foundry works for you, such as revolutionizing how you interact with and access content, to being able to build in three dimensions in 2D, overhauling combat completely for your particular system, 
adding special effects like lightning filters that will react to the sounds that you're playing in your scene, and there's even a way to play in 3D. And that's going to wrap up this bird's eye view of Foundry and what all it has to offer. Hopefully this has shed some light on all the different features and capabilities of Foundry. Obviously, it's able to handle a ton of things. There's a lot of different complex features and capabilities immediately in the core software. And that gets even more crazy once you start adding in all of the different modules and a lot of the different systems. Now, while all of this can get a bit overwhelming and intimidating, it certainly doesn't have to be. You can do a ton with Foundry by just sticking to the basics and keeping it simple all the way through. Then if you wanna add on more later, you absolutely can. And that flexibility is why Foundry is our favorite VCT. But let us know what you think in the comments. Are you a fan of Foundry? Why or why not? And how does it stack up to other VTTs for your needs and your uses? I've been Zephyr with the BaileyWiki channel. And if you are diving into Foundry, we also have a ton of playlists on modules and the basics of Foundry that you can check out on our channel to learn just about everything you need to know about Foundry. And if you enjoyed the video, then subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, but you also gain access to all the modular systems and scenes that we've made, including the ones featured in this video today. Once again, this has been Zephyr. Thank you so much for watching, happy gaming, and have a good one.